Will you join me for a, a moment of prayer? Oh, gracious God, we thank you for your amazing love and how we come to you sweetly broken. Lord, we just see your awesome power. And as we delve into your word, as we delve into what's before us, Lord, help us to see you. Help us to know you. Help us to trust you. Help us to focus on who you are and who you're calling us to be. In your holy and precious name, amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning is just one verse. It comes out of the uh, prophet Ezekiel's words, Ezekiel 22, verse 30. It's on the screen behind me. It's also in your worship folder. And would you join me in reading this word? I look for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it. But I found no one. Found no one. As uh, I was thinking about this, uh, this standing in the gap and being in the gap, it took me back to probably about four or five years ago. And as I were, we were traveling to San Diego, actually we were traveling from San Diego back to, to Buffalo, um, and, and Beth was, had some work things in San Diego or Anaheim, and, 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 but as we got to San Diego and turned in the rental car and got to the airport, which they said, oh, it's never busy, it's a quick, easy in and out, and it'll be fine, and we get there, and the line is already out the door and down the curb, and that's at 5.30 in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning, excuse me, because we had to be on the airplane by 6.30. So we get in line and we start making our way through and, and about, about six o'clock they said, if you're on this flight, which was our flight, we, we move on up where TSA is really backed up. TSA was really backed up. That was the hold up. And so we moved up in line and there's this young mother in front of us. She has two daughters and, and she goes through the, the security and she sets off the alarm thought, oh, this is not going to be good for her. And as she sets it off, they said, oh, go back through and go through again. And they did, and she did. She set it off. And here, as I was looking at her shoes, she has these little pebble or little metal things on her shoes and is setting it off, but no one else realizes it. And you can't tell TSA anything or you'll be next. So as she goes through, they take her to the private room. We go through, and at this time, Beth still is still uh, nursing Josh. And, and when we came over, they said, leave your freezer packs unfrozen, because if you leave them frozen, then we have to pull you aside. We get to San Diego, they're unthawed, and, and they're there. And they said, oh, you should have left them frozen. Now we're definitely going to have to search you, because it's a liquid now. And so I was like, ugh. So I get pulled into the room because Beth has the boys, and I said, oh, they're mine. I'll just claim them right here and right now. And uh, so we're late for this airplane. It's supposed to leave at 6.30. This woman, I get on first, and this woman is behind me. We get on. We finally leave about 7.30. So you can imagine everyone who's been sitting on that plane giving us the death looks as we travel to the back of the plane because that's where our seats were, because we could take care of the kids. And, and it was just interesting, just having this conversation with this, this young woman. She, her, her husband's in the Navy. He's overseas. She's flying back east for a family wedding. And it's her in-laws, so it's not even her family. Um, but she wants her girls to be a part of that, to see what's going on, to be involved with it. And, and I share about my brother-in-law, who was deployed at that point in time. And, and we just made this connection. But when we landed an hour later and everyone missed their connecting flight to Baltimore, we took the hit again because everyone is so angry. And it was that, that moment to me, it just was like, you know what, we're standing here. We're, we're, isn't that what we're called to do is stand in this gap? That as other people are just pouring out words and pouring out anger, and there's this, there's this this time that we gather around someone who's vulnerable, who's hurting, and we begin to converse with them. We begin to talk with them. We begin to communicate with them. We, we begin to pray with them and open up that doorway so that they can see that there's someone who cares. Because in this passage in Ezekiel, God is looking. God is looking around for for looking for someone to stand in this gap. 
If we go back earlier in Ezekiel 22, actually if you go through Ezekiel a lot, you'll see a, a, pat, you'll see a pattern that begins to, to come out of it. You, you'll begin to see a pattern where God accuses the people of doing things they shouldn't be doing and, and now there's going to be this destruction and, and, and God lays out all the reasons and, and then it just repeats and repeats. In this Ezekiel 22 passage, we, we have God coming up to, to Ezekiel and said, I want you to relay this on to the people. I want you to hear these words of accusations that I have as God against them. Because I've been searching for someone. Searching for someone to stand up for those that are poor, to stand up for those that are broken, stand up for those who, who are looking and searching for me. And I haven't found anyone. The, the priest or the religious leaders of the day, they're supposed to be there and they're supposed to be helping these and they're supposed to be keeping the, the sacred sacred. But they're not. They're lining their own pockets. They're doing their own things. They're, they're, they're sharing words that aren't from me. They're trying to appease the people, but they're not listening to what I am saying. I am telling them to repent. I'm telling them to come back to me. And they're not. In fact, they're just doing the opposite. They're doing violence against me. They're doing violence against those that are hurting. They're just, they're, they're ignoring what is happening. I'm searching for someone to stand in that gap. To fill that hole. And I'm not finding anyone. And as we've been talking about this journey of prayer, and we've been looking at these different opportunities for prayer to be a part of our life and a part of our day, I think God is still in that mode of looking for someone to fill that gap. And will it be you? Will you be the one that, that is hearing that call from God? Will you be the one who's, who's hearing that, that word from God and saying, yes, here I am. I see those that are broken. I see the lonely. And my heart is beginning to be broken and torn for them. This past week, we were, uh, Beth was doing junior pony camp. So we had three days of six to eight year olds. Then we had a five hour break. Then we had three days of six to eight year olds. And I had the lucky privilege of being there all week. And uh, it was amazing to see six and eight year olds. And I forgot what it was like to have a bunch of them all at one time. But hearing them, watching them, listening to them seeking the same things that I was, looking for someone that cares, someone to hold their hand, someone to walk with them through the unknown, through their fears, through their hurts, someone to help them to understand who God is and what God is doing. Someone that could stand in the gap for them. Someone who would bridge that divide. And not just stand in the gap for them, and, uh, 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 but also help them through. Help them see that they are valued. That they are worth. That God loves them so much that He died. And he rose again. Same thing we're looking for, right? We have those same questions. We have those same fears. We have those same issues. We have, we're, we're looking for someone to help us, to stand in the gap for us. Or maybe our prayer life is one such that we can stand in the gap for others. And, and as we've been walking through this, this prayer series, we, we, we looked at different avenues of prayer. We, we, we saw the forgiveness that Christ brings. 
And if we look at that uh, uh, quite a bit and we look at all that's going on, that, that really is a focus on me. And if we're going to continue to walk down this path of prayer, there comes this point in time where we need to begin to, to look at others. And we need to begin to see how we can stand in that gap. How we can be the one who's, who's there and the one who's, who's opening that door for others. To get beyond me. To get into the heart of others. And, and maybe it's not that we're not there yet. Maybe it's the, the weight that we carry. We're not able to lift that burden off of ourselves right now. The diagnosis wasn't good. The pain is great. The relationship is crumbling. Finances are tight. And we just don't know where to turn. And so we're not able to turn to help someone else because we're standing in that need as well. We're seeing that gap and wondering who's going to fill it for us. And this morning we have a great opportunity. This morning we have this opportunity of being the church. This morning we have that opportunity of, of, of playing safe, but also stretching. In your worship folder are cards. It says, I'm in the need of prayer. My concern is. I ask you if you if, if, fill these out. And as we come for communion and we're taking communion, you can lay them right down on the altar rail or you can even put them right here on the communion table. You can put them face down. However you want to put them. You can put them face up. Doesn't matter to me. It's your concern. And next week what you'll do is you'll find these concerns posted on the bulletin board in the sanctuary. And here's an opportunity for you to stand in the gap for someone else to take that concern, to pray for that concern for the week. You don't know who that person is. Well, you know it's someone in the room. But you may not necessarily know who that person is. That person may not know who you are. But they're saying they're going to stand in the gap. They're saying that they're going to pick up the need, your need. And they're going to take it to the cross and they're going to place it there before the Father. And they're going to pray because they're also feeling that need to stretch, feeling that need to take their next step in their prayer life, hearing God's call to stand in the gap so that, as Ezekiel says in this, in this, in this verse, that I, as God searched to and fro, I didn't find anyone. We can stand and say, yes, there is. It's going to be me. I'm going to stand in that gap. I'm going to stand with my brother and my sister. I'm going to stand with the person who shared this concern. And I'm going to walk with them. I'm going to lend them my prayer. I'm going to lend them my heart. I'm going to lend them my life of uh, my time so they can see God moving. And someone else is going to do that for me. You don't have to put your name down if you don't want to. It can be anonymous. If you want to put your name down, put your name down. I advise you to put it on the back, though. And then if you want a follow-up conversation with whoever's praying for you, they know where to go. This is what it is to be the church. We're going to do it here, and it may seem like this is just for us. But as we get in the habit of praying for each other, there'll come a moment as, as God opens our eyes and our ears to what he's doing here that we are able to do it for the world. 
that we're able to take those next steps and, and move into those that we have heard the cry of needy, the needy as we come into our, our time of communion. We're, we're coming into this, this time as well that this table is open for all people. That there's no one that this table is not for. This body and this blood was sacrificed and shed for everyone. Not only in this room, but in this world. And as we come into this moment, there are, are times, or as we search our heart, we begin to see that we need to confess. That we need to seek forgiveness of. It may be that God has placed on our hearts someone to pray for, and we haven't done it. It may be that we have heard the cries of those around us, and we've ignored them. It may be we have, we have said some things that continued the cycle of someone feeling inadequate, unworthy, unloved. It may be that that time of confession is for us in the here and the now.